So uh, real quick, what we're doing, we're on a road tour. Yeah, right? yeah. We have a new host. This is yeah. Suzanne. We yeah. want to introduce her to all of our viewers. So we're hitting okay. every county that views us. That's cool. In seven, or yeah. five days, seven Lucky counties a day. This is our day. last day, I know. This is our 35th county. We got yeah, one more to go to. Oh, yeah, we've been rolling, yeah. Uh, beat, beating some of your uh, times on that, on that <laughs> out there. Maybe not so much in our RV, but uh, it's been fun. So we just wanted to come by and take a look at your place and maybe yeah. ask you a couple questions sure, after. So you just want to give us a condensed, yeah, yeah. super fast. I know you're you yeah, spinning no, fast. Uh, Let's do one of those. Count, yeah, I'm pretty fast. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, most uh, all the cars in here are milestone events, the real cars. Mm -hmm. Like this car is the car that I won the... 2005 All-Star Race uh, with uh, in Charlotte, uh, 2005, and it was a million-dollar paycheck night. So oh, okay. uh, we happen to have all three of the cars that I won million-dollar paychecks with in in the museum. Yeah, so do they give you that in like a, a briefcase or a duffel bag? Yeah, or? they were. Uh, one of these cars has uh, dollar dollar bills flowing all over. <laughs> I you know, love it. They threw out out of the Bink, Brinks truck. It was fake. <laughs> That's what I'm talking. Oh, fake, of okay. course. But right, they okay. were throwing them all over the racetrack following along but anyway this is kind of where we start this is my first win in nascar uh cup competition this is the car uh from 1989 rockingham mm -hmm. uh I, I raced for jack roush uh 19 18 years and this car was the 10th car that we built and we got our first win with it and we got four or five wins. Uh, we retired this car two different times mm -hmm. for better race cars. Mm -hmm. Then we went back and drug it out when we were having dry mm -hmm. spells and yep. won with it again. Oh, so wow. it, it represents either four or five of my 35 wins, okay. this particular chassis. So it's a real special okay. race car. It's that, it's that one. Everybody seems to have one as yeah. their go-to yeah. race car. At what lap or what point in that race did you know this is it. This is going to be my first one. Oh, at the, it was the very last few inches of the race because I had run second six times. Oh, yeah. And every time I'd go to another race, the media would ask me, when are you going to win? I'm like, I don't know. I hope soon because it's driving me crazy. All right. I love it. All right. Let's keep rolling. You'd say, have you, did you ever work in a pit crew? Ever? Uh, at some you, point? Yes. I was a crew chief for Rusty Wallace once in nice. uh, 1978 for one race. Uh -huh. And, uh, and also, uh, I do have my have my uh, experience uh, up on the pit box. Yeah, how fast do you think you could change a tire if you had to? Oh, last time I changed a tire in a pit crew, we were having to do it with lug wrenches. They had a rule where you couldn't oh, use air wrenches. That's so, awesome. Uh, but we could get it done uh, around just under 30 seconds back then. No. So we had these lug wrenches made just right with weights on them so that when you flung it one time, it would take the nut all the way off. And then when you flung it, this way to put them on it had so much weight spinning that when it hit it would tighten it and you wouldn't have to go back and tighten it so we we had to get really fast at it because they were trying to make us not change tires during mm -hmm. the race mm -hmm. and so we made these lug wrenches and we did all this stuff and, and got it down to about 30 second pit stops That's so that we impressive. could change two tires in 30 seconds and we could do it during the race so we continued to change tires Forgot how to change a tire. <laughs> <laughs> That's legit. That awesome. Second race car that I ever raced. Uh, the first and second years I raced were right out here at Batesville Motor Speedway. Oh, yeah. I got my very first race uh, start out here in 1974. Uh, we were towing with this trailer in 74. This is the car from 75. And if you look here at this picture, this is a photograph in 1975 with the trophies that I had won with this car sitting on it on this trailer. Mm -hmm. So 40 years of difference. Uh, I finally got this trailer back in 2015 and restored it and put it in here. So that's 40 years of history. I would say in football, uh, what I've noticed is that for every athlete in football, there's always that one hit where you have a decision to make. If this is for me or for it's not for me. Does it, do you all have that same moment in racing where I don't know if it's top speed you hit, maybe a, a close collision where you have to make your decision. This is what I'm meant to do or no, I need to go and hang this up. Well, I was uh, not going to make it in the NFL, as you can <laughs> Fair see. Fair enough. You could be fat. You oh, are yeah. fast. <laughs> <laughs> or the NBA. So um, I wanted to, I, I liked to play sports when I was a kid, wasn't any good at it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't any good at anything until I started driving a race car. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it was pretty cool to be good at something. But uh, I started in 74, mm -hmm. uh, racing in the dirt tracks around here. 
And in 70, in 78, I came to this realization that I was going to be able to make a living doing this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that I remember it was a very euphoric feeling, mm -hmm. you know, because I was doing it for, for the fun of it because I was finally good at something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was a, a great realization. And uh, there were times when it didn't look like I was going to make a living at it, but yeah. uh, it did all work out. That's awesome. All right. I'm sorry to hold you up. Oh, there we go. Oh. Yeah. Uh, right around the corner here is another uh, million dollar car. This is where they, they, I followed the car around after the race and they were throwing these million dollar uh, oh, yeah. checks out. But one of the cool <laughs> things about this race was not only did we win a million dollars winning this race, but a fan won a million dollars. So we made a fan a millionaire this night. Yeah, do you remember the fan's name or did, was it just that random? I have, yeah, I, I have to look it up because okay. I don't want to say it wrong. Okay. Uh, but I know her. Oh, yeah. uh, I bet she, she better know you. Yeah. We, we're buddies. Yeah. She loves me. She's a fan for life. But <laughs> yeah, she was chosen to be my, if I, was, if I won, she would win a million dollars. And, and so we won a million and, they, and she won a million and it was a very special night. And matter of fact, uh, I was hoping that uh, I might see her in this picture, but I don't. But uh, it was a very special night. This is a picture of Victory Lane, mm -hmm. and you can see the joy and excitement. This race team here had never been to Victory Lane before, so it was probably my 30, you know, my 32nd or 33rd mm -hmm. win in my career. But these, this group of guys had not won on on, on this level, so um, this was a real special. Uh, a special win for them. Yeah, you probably don't see her in that picture because she's unconscious somewhere. Because <laughs> she just won a million bucks. Good night. That'd be awesome. Oh yeah. Now I like this. Yeah. I'm a, I, li I like me some a little whiskey here and there. Yeah. Crown Royal. Uh -huh. Yeah. Crown uh, Royal sponsored the IROC series, which is the International Race of Champions, where they invited four uh, 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 drivers. They invited drivers from all different venues all across the world: Formula One, IndyCar. Uh, World of Outlaws, all kinds of drag racing, you name it. And they all came and raced in equally prepared cars. Mm -hmm. This is where I had the most success of my career is in, in the IROC series. We want, this is the only thing where I outperformed Dale Earnhardt. Okay, I uh, like it, yeah. We got 13 wins and five championships, and I think that uh, he got four championships mm -hmm. and 11 wins, so he gave me a run for my money. There but uh, this, this, this is right off the racetrack. It hasn't been cleaned. You can see the rubber and all on the car still. Uh, the pushing and shoving on the front bumper and the back bumper mm -hmm. where we were making contact. I wanted it to be straight off the racetrack, and this also was a million dollar uh, championship winning car. So, um, pretty special stuff for a little kid from Batesville, Arkansas. All right, Sue, so I don't know about driving this bad boy. That's a little bit more our speed yeah. right here, yeah. Definitely. Think, I was going to say, like, uh, is that something that you hopped in when you were a little kid? I, 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 don't, I don't think even I could fit in that one. <laughs> that is the oddest trophy. Uh, oh, that's a trophy. That, that's awesome. that, is a, that is actually a, a pole winning trophy from the Chicago Speedway, I think. So. Uh, pretty interesting little trophy, but I see they still give them out because I, I see them uh, every time they go there to the po pole winner gets that and gets one like that. So it's pretty cool. But we have a we have a lot of stuff. All the trophies are here from probably all 96 of my top three series in NASCAR wins are here, and uh, like I said, many of the milestone race cars. But my favorite part about the museum here is, is the photographs because they capture all the people that worked on my race car or worked with me or raced against me or I raced with through the years. And that, that's really special. But I know you guys uh, probably know this, but I'm a very proud Arkansan. When I retired coming back home to Arkansas, was really important to me and and uh, we're putting on this big race oh, yeah. uh, in uh, September right in September mm -hmm. yeah. and one of the cool things is is that we expect to have uh, racers from 30 different states wow. coming into our great state of Arkansas to, mm -hmm. to enjoy the beauty and and my very first dirt track nice That's awesome. so uh, That's be special. yeah so it's, it's a lot of fun it's be our second annual and uh, we're really putting a lot of work and emphasis into that and really want to get everybody to 
come out and watch it. Uh, uh, it'd be, we'll be out there all, all week from, from Tuesday night on. So if you can't make it on Saturday night for the big race, we got a lot of great racing yeah, all week. The cool thing I heard about that, you, you said you're a proud Arkansan. Uh, the, a lot of the sponsors are going to be Arkansas businesses. This is a grassroots fundraiser. So what happens in Arkansas stays in Arkansas and, so, and keeps giving back to the state of Arkansas. What does it mean that, you know, your Arkansas boy can come grow on up and put on stuff like this where you have racers coming from across the country just to get on your track? Well, there's two sides of it. One side of it is is that, you know, we, we're really excited to partner with great company, Arkansas-based companies to do something that, that benefits uh, children mm -hmm. in the area here, abused children. Mm -hmm. uh, this year's all the fundraising is going to go toward uh, uh, Children Adv Advocacy awesome. Center here in Batesville. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited about that. But also um, to be able to do something to help the grassroots racers. I was one of those guys mm -hmm. once. And what I really am going to try to do is leverage uh, as much national coverage as I can for yeah. these guys for them, their careers, and their sponsors to try to help them as well. So it's a double whammy for me. I'm so excited to be able to do it. And uh, we had so much fun last year. It was just absolutely amazing. I was actually bummed on Monday when we had to go back to the real world because yep. the whole week was just a blast with the racers and with the fans and all the things that we do, just uh, really good times. Yeah, when you talk about those grassroots racers, they see a guy like you and they're just like, that's who I want to grow up and be like, you know. Do they ask you, hey, uh, before I hit this line, before we, you know, put that pedal to the metal, what's one piece of advice you could give me? What would you tell them? Gosh, man, never, don't give up on your dream. Mm -hmm. And the way to get there is to outwork the next guy. I mean, the, the, the real reason that I made it all the way to where I did was, number one, I was very fortunate, mm -hmm. but I outworked the competition. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't have more talent than they had, mm -hmm. but I worked harder. I and um, that'll, ta you know, hard work will make up for some talent. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to drive the rest of this road tour. I'm going to be just going about 100 miles an hour down the interstate now. You're pretty good at racing cars. Yeah. <laughs> I do have one more question for you. you like, are you a dog guy? You like dogs? I like dogs. Yeah, right. I don't have one okay, now, but well, I have one. I have one. All right. His name is Shade. He's like the real, most popular dog here in the state now after this tour. All right. <laughs> if I give you Shade, would you give me that bottle of Crown sitting by that trophy? I mean, that has to be a special bottle of Crown right there, right? It's pretty special, but I'd have to see Shade to, to, to give you a, an answer. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> I love it.